Good evening, friends. This is Sunday School with me. I want to talk about our children. I want to talk about our children in the sense of how our behaviors and our actions are going to impact our children's lives. You know, it's really, really important to watch your behavior. It's really important to watch how your children are impacted by your conduct, by the way you you carry yourself in this life. Childhood is very short. The amount of time you're going to know your children for, they will be adults. The majority of the time you will know your children, you will know your children as adults. You only know your children as children technically for 18 years, biblically for 12 years. So biblically, your children are really a child for 12 years because once they hit puberty, they're ready for bat mitzvah or bat mitzvah or rites of passage or whatever you want to call it. In some cultures, it's 16, and they have the big sweet 16 party and so on and so forth. But technically, it's really 12 years. It's really 12 years. Scientifically, it is known that most children, the personality of who they really are is etched and sculpted in them by the time they're seven years old. This is researched. So you have a child at seven watching the parent be negative, behave negatively, act negatively for seven long years. And when that child get older and the child start acting negative, you wonder why the child is acting that way. You're telling the child, what's your problem? Why do you have such a bad attitude? Well, uh, they got it from you. They got it from you. You know, these are some aspects of generational curses where the negative behavior that you saw your parents do, whether it was your mother, your father, your grandparent, your aunt, your uncle, imprinted on your subconscious and you thought it was normal. So now you're doing it. Now you're doing it. And then you become, you become a parent and now your children are doing it. So when they're a little older and behaving negatively towards you, you want to get upset about it. We have to be careful how we behave and how we live around our children. If you're lazy, your children will probably grow up and act lazy and make excuses not to do anything. Guess where they got it from? If you're mean-spirited or you have a strong Jezebel spirit in you, your daughters are going to grow up and be very unmanageable. Guess where they got it from? If you're passive aggressive and you don't deal with things in, in a straightforward way, in an honest way, and, and you hide your true emotions, but, you, but, but you're constantly bickering about people and you're frustrated with people because you don't have the wherewithal to say, to stand up and say in a polite way, hey, can we talk about this? This is what I'm feeling. This is how I'm interpreting our relationship. This is how I'm interpreting our conversation. This is how I'm interpreting our interaction. But yet you secretly can't stand the person. You secretly hate the person because of which you failed to give clarity on. That's an act of passive, passive aggression. Guess what your children are going to be? They're going to be passive aggressive. Yeah. If, you, if, if you're cruel and harsh, your children may be afraid to be cruel and harsh to you, but guess what? They're going to be cruel and harsh to others. And it might be siblings if they have any. And if not, they're going to go into society and be cruel and harsh. And guess what's going to happen? They're going to get in trouble. They're going to find themselves in a lot of problems with people, whether it's on the job or with other friends or have deviant behavior where they're doing illegal stuff because they, was, they were raised to be callous 
because of your cruelty and your harshness. Is this is what you want from your children? This is not Talk Trash Thursday. This is Sunday School with me. Yes, it is. Why? Because children's lives matter and their lives are impacted oftentimes by the parent's behavior or lack thereof. If you want to break generational curses that you inherited from your parents or their parents or whatever elders in your community and family that you grew up around that, that affected you, that those negative, negative spirits jumped on you, you got to work on yourself. You really got to work on yourself. Sometimes children grow up and, and, and they're suicidal. And we wonder why. Well, I gave them television. I gave them clothing. I gave them schooling. I gave them technology. I gave them this. I gave them that. I gave, you gave, 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 gave all these material things. But did you give of yourself? Did, did you sit down with that child and explain to the child why you are sad? or why you are mad, or why you are frustrated, or in what you're going through and why you're going through it and how you're processing it. So they understand why you have a spirit of depression. Because what hits you as a spirit of depression might hit that child as a spirit of suicide. And, and, and that's what you don't want. You don't want your child to take all the negativity of your life and, and have it morphed in their life as something more destructive and more harmful. You got to be careful. You got to be careful. If you smile in people's face and badmouth them behind their backs because you really can't stand them, you're confusing your children. You're teaching your children to be a hypocrite. You're teaching your children to not be forthright. As I said, this is Sunday School with me. One of the reasons why children have a hard time dealing with other people is because they're confused. They see their parents talk to the person but then they hear what the, the negative things, the bad things their parents are saying about the person and they, 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 they don't know how to deal with, with this person. They don't know to like the person or to, to not like the person because their parents are confusing them. You gotta be careful because some of you people drag your children to worship <laughs> and this is some of the reasons I stopped going as a teenager because my, my parents would drag me to worship and, and I would see how people would, everybody, praise the Lord, hallelujah, and, mm, hey, sister so-and-so, hey, brother so-and-so. And, and these people don't even like each other. And this is happening at the, at the worship place. Come home and the person you hugged, the person you kissed, the person you smiled with, and hey, hey yeah, let's get together, we gotta get together. Da, 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 da. Yeah, let's, we gotta go shopping together, we gotta have dinner, or we gotta talk, or and, and you don't even like them. And, and you know something? Sadly, this is mostly women who behave this way. This is mostly women who behave this way. If you're phony, guess what? Your children are going to be phony. And guess what? They're going to be phony with you eventually. You know why? Because they got it from the master phoniness person. They got it from you. Be careful what you're teaching your children by your negative behavior. Be careful what you're teaching your children by 
allowing yourself to stay in, 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 in the spirit of negativity that, that you, you're calling depression. Sometimes it's not depression. Sometimes it's choosing to stay negative and giving the negativity a label to justify being that way. You have to be an overcomer for the sake of your child, for the sake of your children. You have to overcome. Now, everybody has things to, that they need to overcome. So do I. So do I. But if you have young children, you got to overcome for their sake. You have to overcome. You have to fight tooth and nail to stop the negativity, to stop this depression, to stop this pessimism, to stop this double-mindedness, to stop the spirit of Jezebel. And the spirit of Jezebel can affect women and men. This spirit of Jezebel is always labeled with women, but men have it too. You have to stop the laziness. You have to stop being erratic. You have to stop being a procrastinator. You have to stop being a complainer. There's a lot of things we have to stop, but find out what you're doing and how it's impacting your young children and stop it for crying out loud. Break the curse. You have the power to do it. This is Sunday School with me, and have a good day. Good night.